Yeah? Yeah. So Techland, the guys behind Dead Island and Call of Juarez games, uh, among a few others, are back with uh, inarguably their slickest and most polished game yet, Dying Light, yeah. with uh, Warner Brothers. Now, if you played Dead Island, uh, or its sort of sequel, Riptide, you kind of know what to expect. This is an open world zombie game with a heavy focus on melee combat. But what Dying Light does differently is that uh, the way you traverse the world is um, it's pretty unique, really, certainly for an open world game. I mean, there's a heavy focus on parkour, and uh, it's, it kind of plays out a little bit like Mirror's Edge, although that's a, almost a lazy comparison, just because Mirror's Edge itself, even though it is first-person parkour and, and very good at what it does itself, uh, those are kind of scripted um, linear levels where, yeah. you, you know, you, you kind of... There's a, there's a path designed for you. There's a few branching paths, but you know what I mean. Whereas in Dying Light, it's a kind of vast open world. This, uh, this city called Haran, I, I assume it's like a made-up Middle Eastern city is what it's, it seems to be, that's been uh, hit by standard zombie virus infected, you know, all that sort of stuff is kind of taken for granted that you know you know about all that and you don't really care. It's been in a billion things. Mm. But the, the, the world that they've made, that the Techland have made, is, is quite incredible, really, because... While it looks pretty much just like a Middle Eastern city, every single building, every single element of it has been laid down so you can kind of traverse it using this this parkour system, this free-running system. Pretty much, if you're good at it, you can pretty much just uh, cross huge sections of this city without ever touching the ground. And uh, it's both quite impressive from a design point of view, but also just incredibly good fun just to, to be motoring about the city above the above all the zombies and, and completely necessary at first as well especially early on in the game which is a massive game by the way um, early on in the game if you get caught on the roads um, and get swarmed by zombies you're, you're in big trouble quite frankly uh, your weapons are weak and uh, you're not going to survive very long now, um, as the game progresses, obviously you level up your weapons, you level up your skills, it's, it, it won't bore you with the, the minutiae of how all that sort of stuff works. It's fairly standard um, sort of open world RPG type uh, type leveling up systems and, and obviously you can kind of take on more, more zombies etc. But uh, the game's called Dying Light and the, the reason it's called that is because there's this day-night cycle and the night time is completely different to the daytime. Like, uh, for starters, you can't see shit even with a torch. And more importantly, there's this new type of zombie roaming the streets called uh, Volatiles. And you can see them on the minimap. They have like Metal Gear Solid style vision cones. And if they catch you in the vision cones, they will pursue you at high speed. They can get over the buildings. They can basically do parkour themselves. Um, it's fucking terrifying. And you need to get back to one of the safe houses in the game to survive. Otherwise, you're going to get killed. Basically, going out at night time is not a very good idea. But the game rewards you for doing it by uh, awarding you with a ton of uh, survival points, which is one of the, the skill trees, uh, and also doubling your, your sort of stamina and, and, and speed, I think, at the same time, or yeah. power. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's this, it's a really cool risk-reward system where going out at night is, is both genuinely pretty uh, unsettling and very dangerous, but you, if, you, if you've got the balls to do it and you manage to survive, you will um, reap the rewards. Um, it's... And it really is a hell of a game. It really is. Um, Dead Island was always kind of a scrappy affair, uh, one that came to life in co-op. And uh, Dying Light also has um, four-player co-op, and it really does come to life in co-op. But it isn't, I mean, I wouldn't say it's scrappy at all, really. It's, it's incredibly slick. It looks great on Xbox One. Um, the animation of the zombies is absolutely fantastic. Uh, really world-class stuff, I'd say. Mm. And just the core combat, smashing things about, is great fun. Especially if you've played Dead Island, you kind of understand how it works. That things are context-sensitive, like a headshot at the right angle is different to just whacking someone in the stomach and things like that. And you know, you have to move laterally to, to get around things. But, but also just um, the kind of atmosphere of the world, the traversal of the world, the vast amount of missions that are available. Um, many open world games recently have suffered from just having a disgusting amount of content mm. that none of which uh, is remotely appealing. It's just stuff to do. Um, Dying Light has a ton of content. It's not quite Ubisoft level, but all of it seems to fold into this kind of wider story nicely, both narratively but also from, from a kind of a gameplay point of view. You never feel like what you're doing is, is particularly arbitrary, even though some of it is. Um, all of it's counting towards your leveling up as well, making you feel stronger and more powerful in, in the world. And um, it's, yeah, it just, it felt that all the quests kind of fold into each other like Skyrim. I've, I've used that 
that point of reference a few times talking about the game. Um, obviously, it's not a big open world fantasy RPG with dragons, but the, the more you play, the more you realise it's actually taken quite a few cues from that game, mm. and that's a, that's a hell of a compliment, really. And I mean, it really is a hell of a game. What do you think? Uh, I, yeah, I mean, I think I like Dying Light about as much as anyone does. The the the, the critical response has, has been on the, a little bit on the baffling side. Uh, yeah, didn't we work out at the moment it's got a lower score than Assassin's Creed Unity on yeah. PS4? Uh, yeah, on on PS4 it's currently well, as of yesterday when I looked um, was at a 68 on Metacritic, yeah. and Assassin's was at a 70. Um, that's madness to me. Obviously, everybody is entitled to their own opinion, but I do worry that um, a lot of reviewers in having to rush because of the, the you know the review case code sorry came in very late mm. uh, especially for online where people are rushing to, to hit embargoes and the game was actually out before a lot of people got review code so I can understand why this happened but unfortunately I get the feeling a lot of people didn't really play the game on Cob, and it really does come to life on Cob. if you do mainline the story and the story is good and the missions are good but it isn't really the same game as what you and I experienced when we, we've done you know, five or six hours just together. Yeah. Ninety percent of which was just the odd side quest and pissing about, really, and just kind of reacting to the emergent stuff in the world. And that's that's where the game just comes to life completely. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think it, it's a very good game on your own, but it's one of those situations where I think critics should be absolutely explicit about how they played it because it's 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 so much well, so much better is wrong, but it's it, it is really what the game is is a, is a game to be played on co-op. It's so it's so entertaining on co-op. Yeah, um, and you know, reading a review from someone who had played it on co-op is uh, yeah, it's it's not quite like reviewing a battle game in single player, but you know, it's you don't quite get the full experience. Um, I'll say that if you hated Dead Island, you possibly won't like this either. I mean, this is far superior to both of Techland's previous Dead Island games. Far superior. Um, but it is a Dead Island game in everything other than name, really. Um, a couple of reviews I read made reference to the fact that the author didn't like the first Dead Island, but liked this. Mm. Uh, and while obviously, you know, it's completely possible to like one thing and not the other, uh, it seemed to cement the belief that I always had that people misjudged or were kind of unduly harsh on the first Dead Island. But anyway, it, it runs on Techland's own engine, so I think... It looks like a very, very souped-up Dead Island um, in, term, yeah, in terms of the way it looks. The crafting is more or less identical. Some of the missions are, are kind of similar. The combat obviously is similar, but it is just, it's just it's truly excellent. I really think it's an excellent video game. Um, Techland have also kind of cherry-picked some of the best aspects of Ubisoft's open-world games. Um, yeah. So you have to climb the old comms tower. There's sort of now a mild and very simple crafting system involving herbs to sort of craft little tonics for yourself, but they're not major aspects of the game, they're just fleeting. And in the case of the herb crafting, you can ignore that completely if you like. Um, but yeah, like you said, the two things that elevate the game are the parkour and the day and night cycle, because the parkour just works about as well as could be expected. And yeah, like you said, the, the, the world has been built to fit it. There are just ramps and then gaps in fences and piles of garbage to break your fall and railings and zigzagging cars to stay off the floor and stuff. None of those things are ever highlighted or made obvious. So chases are always exciting because you're trying to find a path quickly. And there's always a path, it's just it's often not, not very clear. And you obviously have to get creative, but because this is not yet another superhero game, there's always extreme danger, and there's something incredibly rewarding about your best chance of escape being down to how well you've come to learn the world. Um, that's the only thing that makes you feel truly powerful. Um, and that's the same case at night as well, because you know you do not want to be out at night, as you said, but if you are and you get into trouble, your best hope is to use your knowledge of the environment, or yeah. alternatively have a real thriller trying to evade fuckers just, just blind. Um, and those pursuits are great because they never feel phony or cheap. It's, you know, if you're being chased, you have to bob and weave between buildings and jump up and down over scenery to try and lose them, and you know when you've done it. You know, they don't just suddenly stop following you if you run in a straight line, and they don't stay with you if you're really fast and creative and jumping around the place. It's just, it seems like they've worked that system out perfectly. Mm. Uh, in terms of flaws, I think the game is a tiny bit scrappy, uh, a tiny bit scrappy. I mean, like all Techland games, there are a few rough edges, but um, they are the right rough edges because the game works. Uh, you know, I was going to say it's scrappy, you know, it's not exactly AAA, but in comparison to the AAA sandboxes that released last year, I'll take <laughs> this all day. The odd yeah. hiccup with the parkour, the occasional lack of visual sheen, whatever, the game just works completely perfectly the whole yeah. time. Um, and those, the, the, the laughable, dynamic, 
uh, events from Far Cry 4 and Assassin's Creed Unity that, that they implemented, Ubisoft implemented. You know, hey, there's a guy on the radar, kill him. Hey, someone's running past you, kill them. Hey, <laughs> kill the robber. Kill the dot on your ra- radar. There are dynamic events in Dying Light, but because of how many variables there are, you know, whereabouts it is on the map, whether there are zombies there, whether there are going to be humans there, whether it's day or whether it's night, you never know what you're going to encounter. Even if you've done 20, 25 of them, you never know what's in front of you. It's like Techland saw those things in Far Cry 4 and Unity, and this is them saying, great idea, here's how you actually do it properly. (laughs) Um, My only real complaint is that everybody in Dying Light, every character is way too verbose. The the storytelling and the dialogue are mostly pretty good. Sometimes laughably bad, sometimes almost great, but everyone yaks so much. You can find an NPC, you know, just an NPC on the street and it's just like, hey you, uh, let me tell you a story. It's like, no, I don't don't really want... uh, Everyone talks, 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 and I think that's that's the only downside. But that's honestly, as far as complaints go, that's more... And the multiplayer! The multiplayer is brilliant. Four no, versus yeah. one. It sounds like a gimmick. I've heard that you know modes like this have been you know one of you is an attacker and four of you have to defend yourself and get get destroy these uh, these nests. It, it sounds like something that's been added to a million other games just to add perceived value. But it's excellent. It's as well thought out as everything else in the rest of the game. It truly is excellent. Um, it, you know, it, I've only played the beta or the alpha rather of Evolve, but this was better than Evolve. And I played that for five or six hours. This is better than... I mean, honestly, the multiplayer is absolutely not a throwaway thing either. Um, d- during launch week, there's been this text statement from Techland on the main menu uh, of Dying Light saying, thanks for buying this game. We hope you enjoy it. We have put our hearts and souls into it. And they've cleared it. That's exactly what they've done. Um, I enjoyed Dying Light more than almost everything that came out in the fourth quarter of last year. So it's a hell of a thing to turn up in January. Um especially when I think it could have held its own against the big hitters last year. Uh, yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, certainly in terms of, you know, d- I, I use the word single player, I don't really mean single player, but, you know, that kind of typical single player experience rather yeah, yeah, than, yeah, course, uh, you know, uh, like a Destiny. But, yeah, um, yeah I mean, uh, of the, the big hitters that I played at the end of last year, this, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying this far, far more. And it's such a massive game. I mean, I've played hours and hours and hours of it and I've still uh, got a hell of a lot to do. Um, in both the story and uh, the um, side quests, even though I've played hours and hours and hours. So yeah. it's one of those games that's massive, but it, it's certainly not feeling like a drag at all. Mm. Um, and it also feels like you could get through to the end if you wanted to uh, in, in the space of a few more hours, but you would be missing out on what the, the game actually is. Much like how Far Cry, um, especially Far Cry 3, because it didn't have eagles attacking you every two seconds. <laughs> um, uh, the, the real Far Cry 3 was out in the world and less the you know mainlining the story. I'd say the story in this is is stronger and more enjoyable in terms of the missions than, than it was in Far Cry 3, but still, yeah, the real game's out there for you to find. The real stories yeah. are out there for you to find. And um, I, it's one of those games when sometimes you get a game where people give it a different score to what you were going to give it, either you'd give it much higher or, or the other way around. But you can understand their point of view, you'd be like, yeah, yeah, fair yeah. enough. I'm D- uh, um, sorry, Dead Island actually being one of those games, because it was scrappy and, you know, kind of laughable at points. I could never understand how it got hammered, but I can understand someone not liking it as much as I did. Mm. But this game, I just when people are giving it, um, you know, 5 out of 10, I'm just like, I just don't get it. I just don't understand what game you're playing. Fine, you know, everybody uh, think what they want, but... It's baffling to me. Yeah. This this is uh, really really classy stuff. Mm. 